Welcome to Drug Air Talk. I'm Matt Hamilton. Today we're talking about Steven Johnson Syndrome and 10. I'm joined today by Dr. Jesse Garcia. Welcome, Dr. Garcia. How are you doing, Matt? Uh, Dr. Garcia, what is your area of specialty? Matt, I am a clinical pharmacist uh, specializing in drug interactions and the effects on the human body. I see. And I'm a drug air attorney uh, that does trials and represents victims. And today we're talking about Steven Johnson Syndrome or SJS. Dr. Garcia, what is that? Uh, Steven Johnson syndrome is an autoimmune disease, uh, basically syndrome where uh, the body, uh, for whatever reason, be it an offending agent, uh, decides that it is going to uh, essentially attack itself. So it's a response where the mucosal membranes, so membranes of um, the nose, of the lungs, of the gut, uh, genitals, um, warm, wet, thin mucosal membranes um, begin to destabilize. And so what we mean by that is the, the integrity of the membrane itself uh, begins to decrease, uh, which causes a whole host of issues for us. So if we're talking about somebody that's been subjected to this, this is someone that's been prescribed a drug, yes? Correct. Could be an offending agent such as a drug uh, that they've been prescribed um, for possibly something as simple as a, a dental infection. Okay. So they've been prescribed a drug, the drug enters their body, and their body doesn't attack the drug, but rather starts to attack itself, namely these, these membranes within the body. Correct. Okay. And uh, how does one know if, if they're starting to get Steven Johnson syndrome? Steven Johnson syndrome is a progressive disease. It's not one that we would see where uh, we would just all of a sudden have these types of symptoms. So it would initially start out with flu-like response. So you would expect your uh, chills, your fever, um, a little bit of nauseousness, achiness, uh, kind of, you know, when, when you feel like you have the flu. Okay. That's how it begins. Uh, then we'll progress to beginnings of uh, blistering and affecting those integrity of those membranes. So that would be your blistering. That would be a rash. And in this case, a purple rash. Okay. okay. Which looks like a very, very severe bruise. And you would see this typically over the face, kind of uh, chest and torso area. That's how it begins. Okay. Untreated, uh, it can then progress on to a more serious condition. Blistering, fever, rash. Okay. Well, how is it treated? Well, purple rash. A purple rash. Purple rash. Because typical rash, you'd see like a red, you'd see red marks. You're see. looking for more of a purple rash, almost like a, uh, a very, very large bruise. And when somebody gets this, they probably want to seek instant medical treatment. If you're at the point where you're getting blisters and bruises, you need to get to the emergency room immediately. This is not something you want to wait on. Okay, just get in the car and go. Now. How is Steven Johnson syndrome treated? Uh, typically, what we want to do is find out uh, if there's an offending agent, so be it a drug. Uh, if you were recently prescribed a drug, you would want to let... Uh, the emergency room folks know, hey, I've been recently started on this medication. Probably bring them a medication list of what you're taking, including things that are even short-term. Because like I said earlier, it could be as something as simple as maybe you're getting pre-treated for some dental work and you prescribed an antibiotic. And that could be the offending agent. Okay. All right. So um, they, what does, as a practical matter, do they do to treat it? Are they, they remove the drug. So we take the drug away. Uh -huh. Okay. So then what? So now after we've taken the drug away or what we believe to be the, the, the offending drug, then we're going to be treating the symptoms. So typically what you'd see is you would probably want to segregate this patient. If the hospital or unit has a burn unit, that would probably be the place you would want to be because some of the symptoms in terms of the uh, integrity of the membranes and the linings of the skin are going to be that similar to a burn victim. Okay. So uh, you won't be able to hold your fluid, so they're going to be able to manage that. Um, they're going to be watching your pain much more closely because it's very, very intensely uh, painful because you can imagine you have a lot of nerves um, in those linings. And so when the skin begins to deteriorate or slough off in some cases, then we see that it becomes a very painful situation. Okay. Removing uh, the causing agent, uh, protecting them from infection, and treating them symptomatically with pain medications. Correct. Okay. Um, how bad can Steven Johnson syndrome get? Can it progress into something else? It can. Uh, Steven Johnson syndrome is typically when you would see what we would call a smaller portion, not a small portion, but a smaller portion of the body. So you're looking from anywhere from 10 to 20%. When you get to the point that you get to 30%, you're going to involve a new 
uh, uh, basically syndrome. It's called TEN. Okay, so it's okay. toxic epidermal necrolysis. Okay, so by definition, just means um, toxicity of the um, uh, uh, epidermal lining that's then causing the top of your skin, top of the skin, your skin that's then sloughing off. So that's a necrolysis portion. It's dying. It's it's essentially dying and falling off, uh, almost kind of peeling away. What's what? Uh, how does what does that tin uh, entail? Swelling, I imagine. So you're, you're gonna you're gonna swell. You're gonna not have the ability to hold water. So you can imagine water then um, not being able to stay where it's supposed to. So what I mean by that is uh, fluids within the blood. You could have fluids within the tissues uh, are then freely moving in places where they shouldn't be. I see. Okay, you're not going to be able to retain heat as well uh, because that skin layer is the you know, part of the portion that helps uh, keep warmth in. So you're going to be colder. Um, you're also going to be more prone for infection because that's a protective layer for us on the skin. That's You're talking not just outside, you're talking inside as well. Toxic epidermal necrolysis, necrolysis is deadly. It is, in fact, deadly. And Stephen Johnson's it's, can be deadly as well, although it does not necessarily need to progress into tens to become deadly. I see. Okay. Well, Dr. Garcia, thank you. It's been interesting learning about this. We'll have a follow-up video on the causes of these two conditions. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank if you, you want additional information on Stephen Johnson's syndrome, uh, the various drugs that can cause it, uh, the errors that are made, and how those are treated, you can visit our website at worldwideweb.law-kc.com. And it has many research links, as well as a really large amount of, of uh, good information for you. You can also visit our YouTube channel for additional videos on this subject. I'm Matt Hamilton, joined by Dr. Jesse Garcia, and it's been a pleasure being with you.